you lead us in, Kevin? Welcome everybody to the Sicilian Queens with the Maestro Eolo Paolo Botaro. Uh, this is episode four, where we talk about the Essendon project. You have the beautiful, talented Lena Messina. And talented. So grab yourself, un vino, o un aperitivo, un po' d'alive, un mosquito pani, and join us. Come on. Un peperoncino, magari un peperoncino, eh? un peperoncino ci vuole. You ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the Essendon project. So you showed, shared with us the last episode about how you added a little seed and you spoke a little bit and the seed became fruition. That's right. Yeah. Look, look. Uh, I, at that stage, I'd, I'd travelled back to, like I mentioned, I'd travelled back to Sicily to complete Isidane and completely focused on that. And I, I believe that she was integral to the creation of Atlas because um, uh, in, in the psychological aspects was that I was, um, uh, you know, for, for the patrons as well, uh, there was a, an element of intrigue that, you know, I was positioning myself in a small town in Sicily to bring back this sculpture. So obviously that fed into, uh, one thing feeds into the other and they, they sort of fed into that. And then during that, that period that I was completing her, you know, I had already started to talk about the possibility of this sculpture with just the people of Polizia and, you know, I want to, you know, I need to go back to nurture this sort of thing. Um, and then, then one strategic move again was to come out of Sicily prior entering Australia again and to spend a good three months in Rome. Like, I'm very fortunate to be able to do things like that but I consider them my work as well. I knew that if I was in Rome, I'd be surrounded by monumental sculptures and so forth. And so that period, I intensely looked at Rome and sculptures and I'd just go for immense walks and so forth. At the same time, communicating uh, within Australia and saying, you know, like I'm, I'm absorbing, I'm now absorbing like a sponge to come and create you know, in Essendon, um, and, and the most phenomenal thing, uh, I had a tiny studio in Sicily, uh, and then I get an email saying, with one of those uh, panoramic shots from the phone of the studio uh, in Essendon, and it was a hanger, you know, it was a 1945 sort of like... Uh, Airport and hanger, was, yeah. And they said, is this studio good enough, you know, for you, <laughs> Mr. L? <Elliot?" laughs> I was like, holy, you know, holy crap, Ola. Like, are you, are you kidding me? You know, like, because the studio is like a womb too, you know, for the creation. So, so if somebody gives you that space as well, then you respect it. And when you create in it, all those, all those whirlwinds of energy go into that. It's kind of like a, what do you call it, a jid or vent or whatever. They all suck into that one sort of point, and 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 there, and there it begins. You know, I I, I get flown in from from yeah. Also nicely, they fly me in uh, from Italy uh, to commence this project, and 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 I embark on something uh, which I believe was beyond me to a certain degree, but the people that I managed to have around me to create it were me so and they all we all work together and without them and I'm talking about um, from the architect because we needed an architect to the engineer to the foundry um, yeah. and the same thing happened in Pulitzi too on a smaller scale with Giovanni the ceramicist the other like it just so happens in in Sicily I need to cook this full figure and it's not easy you find an oven that's um, uh, to cook the terracotta and somebody who knows how to actually do it without exploding the terracotta because there's a chance she would have exploded if she wasn't treated properly. And I find Giovanni in Pulitzi who has an oven. Like, you, same thing. I come back to yeah. Australia and I have this team of people around me that are willing to sort of... Uh, to... to to really support my idea and um, to, when you have that um, and then that's on a logistical scale. 
then I have the management of SNM Field supporting me on top. Um, uh, how can you go wrong? You know what I mean? Like, how, if you, if you, if you're, what, if you're, what made you, what made you do? It's, it's, a, is it Atlas? Is it the? Tell us about Atlas. yeah. Tell yeah. Tell us about how he came about in terms of. He, how he was selected and where is he going to be placed so that people know basically, yeah. Look, when I, I, when I did the fresco at Essendon, I had, a, and I've had since the age of 16, an apprentice um, who came and did, uh, uh, what do you call it, work experience in my studio. A any, anyway, he worked with me. And I remember specifically one day walking kind of in the entrance to Essendon, one of the roundabouts where you enter. You've got you're the Hyatt on the left, you've got Wilson yeah. Security there, and then you've got a major roundabout, then you've got La Mana, then you've got the open fields and you've got Lindsay Fox and the tower and the airport to your right. Um, I simply walked down there and said to Alexi, I see an atlas right here. Wouldn't it look amazing? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> You know, that would be sick, man. You know, like, wow. And I, <laughs> Fully sick, bro. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I said, and, it, and, it, and I pinpointed the position um, or the location that changed so many times during, not, not too many, but changed several times during the creation, but he ended up exactly where I envisaged him because that's, again, I don't know, call it, is it there, call it the gods, call it, 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 it was just, and, and to this day, he's not positioned because now we've gone through what we're going through with COVID-19 and, and, and so we, we, we had to postpone all those sorts of things. But um, uh, the footings there and even the footings has strength already waiting for the figure to go on. How I chose Atlas and the character that bears the weight of the world or the universe yes. upon his shoulders could be slightly personal to some degree, but we all, you know, we all, we all have, we all have those, whether they're, um, whether they're emotional burdens or whether they're really literal burdens or stuff like that. You know, we, we, we all go through those things on an individual level. Um, but I was very conscious of my patrons too. And I thought, here are some people who, who take responsibility and have the responsibility of so many other people. And even I feel the pressure of just having a little bit of that responsibility. And I think, how immense can that be on those people? And, and how can I represent that? And I thought, to me, it has to be represented through a, an aspect of a human or a superhuman that has the ability to balance something um, between between psychological sort of weight and physical weight. Physical weight. Yeah, and so so I went off that, and that's why my sphere is not a sphere. It's not the earth, and he's not heroic. He's he's purely balancing. He's 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 in a position. Uh, he, yeah, he's in a position of balance just just having the weight on his back and holding it and he's not getting up and he's in a, he's in a moment of contemplation of thinking almost yoga i guess um and and i never spoke about this to them but obviously the image that i drew them the initial drawing resonated immediately um and we didn't the beauty of the people at essendon we don't need to speak about it i'm so free I'm, I'm free from I'm free from the gallerist. I'm free from the con concept of contemporary. I'm free from uh, the curators, and, and you know that's what we've got to be as that's artists. That's what an artist you've... needs. An artist is like yep. that. If you've got no freedom, then you can't create. Yeah, yeah. Or you create contrived in a it's contrived controlled. manner. Then it's controlled. Yeah. Um, how, how big? Just can we? Can we get some um, uh, metrics? Of how big is a, is a sculpture? And it's bronze sculpture, is it not? You've put, taken it to a foundry and it's a bronze sculpture or copper? Yeah, yeah. I worked um, with uh, Fund Air Foundry in Sunshine. 
They were amazing, super professional, um, huge job for them. Uh, and they didn't hesitate, you know, like, uh, you know, there was always a bit of a fear of the scale of the thing um, because I, I blew him up a bit, you know what I mean? Like, uh, as I worked... A I bit? I Just a bit? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I couldn't control how he's going to end up. You know, he had to, again, you know, I was being led. And this one was, you know, if you think a foot is probably... Uh, bigger than half of Izide. So I really went to that. So his scale is that if he's standing, he's nearly four metres tall. Um, but in his crouching position, he's about two metres. And then the sphere on top or the orb, which is also made with sheet, copper sheet, and then pot riveted together on a stainless steel interior, which will never rot, much the same as a Statue of Liberty was produced by the French. Created, um, you created history. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like to put it in any... Uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I just... Because it's going to be create. standing there for so many, 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 many years. Yeah. And, Look, shall we, would, and he'll be visual from people driving by from the airport, will he not? You'll physically be able to turn your head and see it as you drive up and past that entry point at the... At, at, at the higher, you should be able to see it on the from the freeway going into the city. I feel. Yeah, that I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe the top of the sphere, but definitely when you come into Essendon, yeah. he's he's there saying hello and goodbye. It, the position is beautiful. Like oh, it's a lovely. Yeah. He's cradled between buildings, and um, we've had to actually put a, a a strip of copper from the base up. Because the copper, the copper orb that will go on top may attract um, electrical. Uh, what do you call it? A thunderbolt. Oh. <laughs> then I'll turn into That's Thor. A beautiful photo Atlas, one day. Atlas, Atlas turns into Thor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, so, um, we've been. Yeah. So okay. I think we could probably do another episode just talking about the Essendon Fields you know, and about more about that. But I've got some questions. Do you mind, Carmela? Lena's got some yeah. questions. Okay, some quick I, questions. I want to ask you one, one and then right, you ask. ask you the question. So what is next for Maestro? <laughs> What's next? What's Look, there are, there are a few things in the pipeline and... Um, Behind me here, <laughs> she she may evolve into something. Yeah, um, I've been watching you. You've been putting pictures out for her. You said, what are you up to, Maestro? <laughs> I had a laugh. Look, uh, I modelled her recently. She's actually Sicilian, Demeter. Yes. Yeah. Um, she comes from the Getty Museum. So she's she, she was actually a bit of an influence of also Isidore. Because uh, I had her, because I surrounded myself with a lot of um, Sicilian sculptures specifically, not necessarily in Sicily, because uh, Gettys is in uh, America, but I will visit at some point. Um, I won't go much into that. I'll let I'll let nature take its course in that one. But uh, yeah, there, there is something there, and there is something also in Sicily that's that's. It's not complicated, but it's something that it's also unveiling by itself and has been happening for the past four or five years. Oh. And it's got to do with, you know, fortunately, it's got to do with um, Modica this time. Where oh, my partner... chocolate. Yeah, the chocolate. Hopefully we can make a little chocolate version. But, um, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's, yeah, strangely in the same period of Isidere, uh, a proposal to do a sculpture was shelved in the 17th century um, during the Baroque period there. And, uh, and I didn't know that. But prior to that, I stumbled across a little bronze in, uh, in, a, in the museum in Modica. And he's fascinated me because he was found apparently by a kid in a river. And... Um, there's no, you know, it's a very refined piece of bronze work for that region. And I believe it was in transit 
then again, I, we don't know. You know, that's you're like the you're like you're like a modern day Indiana Jones that goes <laughs> discovering these little pockets of um, treasures to unleash a story. I think I'm going to call you Indy from now on. <laughs> Indy, forget Indy. about uh, hello, Indy. <laughs> yeah. Well, well no, it seems to it seems to sort of take that flow, and so. Uh, I don't want it to come become too much of a recipe, but it, it, it makes sense to me because again, yeah. it connects to it connects to um, you yeah. know why I, why I want to also be in Sicily, you yeah. know, like uh, it's all part of. And look, obviously, in time, when 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 I have got these heavyweight sculptures behind me, um, then when you propose something, you're you've got more weight to it as well. So, you know, I, I, I like the idea of the philanthropy involved in these things and these people that have been part of my journey, I want to carry them through, uh, you know, even if it's just a financial level of carrying through. Like if I say to them, I'm going to Sicily now to do this, hit me up, guys, you know, like let's, let's put your name to this as well. It doesn't have to be in your backyard. I don't know. But that's... That's that's just the way I, you know. In, in the end, I don't care. You know, the man hours that I put in, I'm, I'm never paid for, really. Yeah. Uh, that, but that doesn't matter. The, the man hours are intense. You know what I mean? Like, uh, as long as as long as there's the money there to to have a good life and 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 to you know to do what you want to do and and to um, to also share that amongst the people that yeah. I mentioned before. Oh. You know, the architect, the have those yeah. people because they become a mini circular economy. Um, Ayola, um, role model. Who's your role model? Just quickly before we ask the questions. Look for years. It's a it's a, it's a hard one. Um, you know, uh, role models. Look, I lived with. This is going to sound weird, but I, I did live with my. And this is. Uh, I'm going. All right. I'm going to have the two. I'm going to have two role models. One I must say is my non Angelina in Sicily that I lived with before she died, uh, and and I managed to have a studio there, and she she gave me the University of um, Avecchiana, <laughs> 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 which is where do you a get diploma. A... <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> and know, the other one. And then the other one, I don't know. It's a bit of a romantic one, but I've always loved. Um, the artist Tiziano Vicello is a role model. I know he's not anyone in the modern times or anything, but the way, he, the way he lived his life and the way he managed to, to conduct himself through Venice and through those hard, you know, play, through the plague, and he actually dies of the plague, but he also worked to a ripe old age of, that nobody knows, 88 or 99. Mm. But that's a long, that's a long, that's a long life for back those terms. Now I've got yeah. some questions for you. Ready for these questions? I am. What's your favourite Sicilian dish? My favourite Sicilian dish. I, I now that I've spent a lot of time in Sicily, I must mm -hmm. say the bloody Arancino. Oh, it's okay. Simple. Your favourite Sicilian town? Oh, not geez. including Saragusa. Not including Saragusa. Why can't I? Because that's going to be a given. I want to know more. So you, can, you can't say Sicily. That's my favourite Sicilian town. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But. Well, it, it, it's spectacular. Okay. Favourite Sicilian town. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. Let me go through. Let me go through. What did I fall in love with? Oh, my God, they're all rushing through my head. Okay, well, you know, maybe we'll leave. Let's let's no, go for, no, no, I'm going to go for a romantic one. I'm going to say, even though it's, it's, it's barely a town anymore, is Nello. I've never oh, been there. Yes, oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I have to, you have to take me there. Okay, Carmelo, you have to go there. Okay, so these are really quick. Canola, Casado or Granita? Which one? Canola, oh, no, Granita. Granita, okay. Pistacchio, gelato, pistacchio, cafe or nocciole? Pistacchio. Okay. Figurine, finocchio or l'orangio rosso? Sanguini, eh? Which one? Figurine. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Soccer, football or tennis? 
Oh God, is it? Uh, you know, neither none. Can I say none of the above? You can. Rock, yeah. pop, or jazz. Rock, pop, or jazz. Uh, rock. Okay. Oh, do you cook your meatballs with raisins or anchovies? No. That's no. Not... I know. Okay. Do you put peas in your lasagna bolognese sauce? Hundred percent. Do you slice a boiled egg in your dish when you make lasagna? Yeah, people yeah. need to know that. That's the true Sicilian oh, way. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell what? us something about yourself, a fact that we would not know. A oh, okay. Secret. Oh. Tell me a secret. Okay, <laughs> this one, the secret that it's not, look, and, I, you know, I don't advertise this, but I am completely dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> I am a dyslexic, born dyslexic, yeah. So, so most, most it, creative people have some absolutely, like yeah. Look, it's I just, quite amazing. No, no, it's been amazing because it's sort of I do think very outside the box. So it's a, yeah. it's quite a, quite a gift. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you, and it's really interesting because during the break I found out that you're today that you're a Prestonian and you worked at the Darabin Council, not when I was a <laughs> councillor, of course, in the arts, yeah. curated, it's incredible. And that there's actually an art piece of art that you fought, you know, you've created at the Darabin, in the Darabin Town Hall. So I have to go and have a look at that. So yeah. you talked a lot about yourself that I didn't even know. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to discuss your art and your journey. There's so much more that we need to, um, dig deep into i'm hoping that we'll have another episode once the scott atlas is out there because i think that's going to close or integrate what we've spoken about so people can visually see him um, and yeah. sorry lena i'm thinking i've got a vision that we okay. do an episode when he's in sicily i would love that was, to oh do darling that's going to be a given you and i and he, yeah it's going to be a given I want to yeah. see you make ricotta. <laughs> oh, in Pulizzi, I would visit where they do the ricotta in the montagne. Yeah. And uh, I oh. spent hours with those oh. guys. Yeah, so did like, I, so do I. I love it. You lose yourself. So we'll finish this. And um, there is so much more to... Thank you so much, Sorelli. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate that we've nurtured this relationship and it's sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's healthy. And I believe that we're all going to meet up in Sicily and uh, hopefully do that bloody walk. I'd love to do that. Um, do the Sicilian yeah. um, Camino. Il Camino. Oh, yeah. There's Did a Sicilian imagine? Camino? Yes, we've yes. got a Sicilian Camino. Stuff the Camino in Santiago. We've got a Sicilian one. That's hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. From where to where? Where? So I just from where to where? Just really quickly. It's a good question. There's a there's somebody that 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 has created it, and we've got it. It's online. Yeah. But we have to oh. get you know out. I'm going to uh, Google that straight away. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know there was one. But thank you. All right, thank you, Iolo. Thank you, my beautiful Sorella, Regina, Italiana. Thank you to everybody. Oh. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home and listen to us and talk Sicilian stories. And I hope that we can have many more of these and that you allow us. And if you do, please follow us, follow Eolo on our social medias. Give us, write us down, write a note, tell us if you really enjoy this, let us know. We're never gonna know if you don't tell us. This way, <laughs> by letting us know, we can do more because there's so many Australian Sicilians that we can share. And then once Lena and I do go to Sicily, we're going to share a lot of Sicilians. With I think, I well. think it's, I think it's important that people know that we don't have structured discussions. Our discussions are topic, you know, you know, Polizzi, Essendon field. That's it. We don't even know where the conversation is going no, to go. And that's what the beauty of it. Cause we don't want anything that's structured. Wherever the conversation goes, it goes. So um, if there's any suggestions, please, you know, send us messages or let us know. So until next time, ci vediamo, arrivederci, e saluto a tutti gli amici, a lontano, e fai, e fai i bravi, e fai i bravi. Bella settimana nostra. Ciao. 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 Ciao.